Hey everybody, sorry about that. A bit of an adventure in trying to get my streaming software working today. Let me know if you can hear me okay and the music is not too loud. Put on some just some jazz in the background to give us a little bit of something to listen to so it's not just, uh, just dead air when I'm not talking. So once again, thank you to all the people who support this channel. Uh, huge thank you uh, to uh, obviously the ones in yellow there, Hans Cruz, uh, Arthur Broadway, James Adams, Hunza, 256J, Scott Hat, and Malcolm Telly, who is receiving a signed print this month. So huge thanks to them. Uh, so today we're going to work on this image of uh, Lenaria, who popped into the studio a couple days ago. I want to do something a little bit before Halloween, so I wanted to get this out for you. And we're going to do some pretty funky things to this today. I thought this would be kind of an adventure in Photoshop. But before we do that, let's talk about something that I see so many people screw up as photographers that is it's not blatantly obvious and I need to address it because I think it's going to make better photographers out of everybody. And there's understanding your exposure in your camera. When you see that preview in the back of your camera and you think it's too bright, chances are it's not too bright. You need to look at the histogram. And I know a lot of people just don't pay attention to this thing because they don't understand it. But you always want to get your data all the way to the right hand side. You don't want to touch the right hand side per se, unless you know your camera and how far you can push it. But in general, you want to push it as far as you can to this side. So you can see here that we're a little bit, uh, almost a stop. These are your stops here. That means that this area is twice as bright as this area. And this area is obviously half as bright as this area. So as you go down, you can see that uh, how much brightness we can capture with our camera. Now, the funny thing is that this is not evenly distributed, not 25% here, 25% here, and so on. It's actually skewed, as all things digital are. 50% of your image data lives here. And then 25% of it lives here, and so on down the road, until you only have an eighth of your image data stored here. That means that there's not a lot of data reserved for the darker parts of the image, which is why you tend to get a lot of noise in the shadows. The other thing that you should kind of be aware of is by increasing the exposure of the image, you're kind of saying, I'm adding data that I really didn't capture, uh, which of course leads to hilarity later on. Um, David says histogram and mirrorless cameras is the reason enough to switch. Yeah, it, it's huge to be able to look at that histogram. And I, I click, you know, when I'm looking back to see, did she blink? I'm also looking at the histogram. And once you have it set, your chances are you really don't need to adjust it too much unless, you know, your light changes constantly. Now you notice here that this exposure is actually set to two stops under what I shot it. So what you're seeing here is two stops uh, dimmer than what I took because I know how far I can push it. Now her outfit was all black and I'm not showing the whole outfit here. This is a little bit too risque for YouTube. But the uh, details I wanted to capture in this black were important and I didn't want them falling off the edge because if you captured this, all these other details that are in the black fall off the edge. This is stuff we didn't capture. So this is the image I captured. And you may think, wow, that is so bright. Uh, why would you do that to yourself? And the thing you have to realize is the, the preview in the back of your camera is not correct. Uh, if you go into, now you can do this in Capture One, but you can't do it in Lightroom and it really doesn't matter. But this is the linear response. This is the response. This is what the camera actually stored without applying a curve. So you as a human can look at the back of the camera and not think it's flat and uninteresting. So that's why you can adjust these little curves on the back of your camera to kind of look at your preview. But realistically, you're capturing all the data and we didn't really clip. And I mean, if we look at this, it looks like it clipped. And I know there's a little bit of wiggle room here on my camera, but we got all the data in the shadows. Nothing fell off the left edge. So now we can always break, bring this down as far as we'd like, right? We're not penalized for doing so. So we can bring it down to wherever we'd like the skin to be, knowing that we captured all this data. And I'm not a big fan of using this highlight slider to do this. I know a lot of people would probably come in here and try and yank on this, and that just looks bad. Just pull the exposure down. Now, if you're shooting in JPEG, uh, all this is off the table. Just forget it, all of this. Because if you're shooting JPEG, what you what you see is what you get. And that curve cannot be undone, and life will go on in a, in a bad way for you. So we're going to use this image today. And to kind of gauge my exposure, I'm just going to hover over part of her face here and say, is it uh, about stop over 18% gray. That's right here. That's where I like to have my skin. And in fact, I've kind of gone a little bit now where I'm starting to pull that back a little bit just for, um, just because I know that through my retouching, I tend to make things a little uh, brighter. But we're going to do some really fun stuff to this image today. We're going to draw all over it in kind of a weird way. At least that's my plan. Uh, we're going to gore this up a bit and we're going to make it kind of veiny and gross and, and so on. 
So if you're still with me through that rant, then <laughs> this should be kind of fun. All right, so I'm just gonna send this over to uh, Photoshop uh, just so we can get that open and get to work. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to type them into the um, settings and or the settings, the comments below. Uh, none of my stream settings are working at the moment, so I don't know what broke inside of my um, interface here. So I can't see how many people are on, but I can see your comments just fine and dandy. Okay, so let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to frequency separate this, and we're just going to get the skin retouched. That's going to take a couple minutes. And I always do it the same way every time. I did a whole video on skin retouching, but if you want to watch it again, that's what we're going to do. Um, this frequency separation action is available free. Uh, just grab it uh, down below. I'm actually going to be changing that to be $2 at some point uh, because uh, the people who are paying uh, to help support the channel should be able to get those benefits. Uh, so it'll be $2 for people who don't support and a dollar for or, um, free for everybody who does. Uh, but I haven't changed it yet. So if you haven't downloaded it, uh, go do it now. All right, so we're just going to work on the low layer here, and I like to turn one layer off so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to do this super fast using the Healing Brush tool. Let me know if the music is too loud, by the way. I really can't hear it on my side. So. Very simple. We're just going to go through and remove any obvious visual distractions we see, and we're going to do this in light at light speed. Uh, because we've done this, if you're a person who's attended this channel before, um, you know we do this pretty we don't have to pay that much attention to it because it is pretty forgiving and she's got great skin so it's easy so i'm just using this brush because i like the flaws in the skin to somewhat remain believable um, i don't want to smooth it all out i know a lot of people use the blending brush and some other things like that and uh that tends to make the skin look a little bit on the lifeless side and for what we're going to do today or at least my plan for what we're going to do today uh, the texture is important and now i don't know what this is going to look like i've never done this before i'm as with most of these uh, kind of live streams, I'm going to experiment a bit and I might fail and that's okay. Or I might come up with something awesome. Uh, who knows? We'll know at the end, right? And uh, by the time you're watching this, if you aren't watching it live, then I've probably already changed the, uh, the thumbnail to be whatever image it is that we made. And uh, hopefully it doesn't suck, right? Or you probably wouldn't click on the thumbnail to come here anyway. Or... I abandoned the video and went, I'm not going to leave that on the channel. I'm just going to delete that now because that's terrible. What was I thinking? Was I thinking I could try that? I don't know. So we are almost done here. So the nice thing about doing a headshot is you only have to deal with the head. I don't have any hands or anything like that. Uh, we do have a bit of neck and chest, but nothing outrageous. So we're just going to kind of, again, make all the visual distractions minimal here on this blurred color layer. And we're going to then go back and do the same thing to the texture. And those two things combined together will create a somewhat seamless uh, image. Our goal here is to have the skin look believable and not overly retouched. And I really like this. Uh, Gary is wondering if he is live or Memorex. And you know what? No one, uh, no one knows, Gary. It's one of those uh, big questions. Are you living in a simulation? That's true. So Gary's an uh, interesting character. So I met Gary back on Google Plus when everybody talks about the fact that nobody was on Google Plus. And I had around 2 million followers on there who apparently weren't real people, uh, according to everyone else in the world. Uh, and Gary was one of those fake people that I met on there. <laughs> so welcome, Gary. I met a lot of great people. Back then. Trey Ratcliffe helped me publish my first book back on Google Plus. I had, um, I had lunch with Lindsay Sterling once because uh, she was looking at her new... Uh, album covers. He just finished shooting with Scott Jarvey and I joined a, a hangout with them and my daughters were home and they're big Lindsay Sterling fans. So, so they got to look through the images and help her pick her, her album cover. So stuff that would never happen on Facebook uh, really were, was great on Google+. Plus. So I do miss that platform. As much as everybody whined about nobody being on it, I loved it. Met all kinds of great people. <laughs> Interesting character, he says. Nice way to say crazy. Yeah, well, we're all a little crazy. I'm not going to worry about that hair yet. We'll deal with that in a little while. I want to do the fun part yet first. Okay, so that's, I think, good enough for that part. Let's do the high layer now. And again, we're just looking. Oops. Uh, by the way, if that happens to you and you get something weird like that, always make sure you're on current layer. Uh, and you see, we don't have as much texture in this area, so I'm actually going to borrow some texture and put it in there. I like to make sure the texture looks uh, somewhat homogenous across the entire uh, image. 
I don't want to have areas where there's not as much texture uh, or areas where there's too much texture. The texture itself doesn't have to be the same. Like, I'm not going to be so picky to say, well, every one of her, her pores needs to look alike. That's just kind of weird. But um, we'll get rid of these hairs. We already took care of those in the color layer, so we know they're fine to remove here. And they get kind of a glowish appearance, too, if you've uh, removed them in one in the low layer and not in the high layer. Little trick, by the way, if you've done frequency separation a lot, something you may not know is if you remove a hair on the high layer, but not on the color layer or the low layer, it'll look like it's depth of field. So you can just remove it here and we can make these things look like they're blurry. Um, it's a great little trick if you don't want to go through and try and remove all the hair around the outside. Just remove it on the high layer alone and it looks uh, looks legit. There, Gary, was that, the, was that the thing today that I taught you? You only say you learn something every time you come here. Was that one? Was that the one for today? <laughs> All right, we're gonna add some, uh, if, if this goes as planned today, this is gonna look really creepy when we're done with it. So, Angel is one of my favorite models. She's an incredible lady. She does not model, by the way, for uh, many people. So I feel really honored that she'll go out of her way. And I said, she says, hey, we should do something before Halloween. I said, what are you doing today? And she goes, or what are you doing tomorrow? She goes, I'll be there at 9 a.m. So she drove uh, better than an hour to get to my place. Shot for a few hours and uh, came up with some interesting stuff. I just got to remember not to turn the browser on while we're on the air because there are parts that YouTube isn't going to like. So be careful there. I do retouch those images as well, uh, but I don't make them public on YouTube. So if you are a member of the channel, those things are coming your way as well soon. Um, but they're not uh, they're not sexual. So just be aware of that if you're looking for that kind of content. That's not what we do here. So well, we are just milling our way through this, chatting about random stuff. Uh, I, I wish that every app I had would remind me to vote um, every 10 minutes. I think that's that's very handy right now. I can't actually wait for voting to be done so that I stop getting asked to go vote. The age of annoyance. Okay. Just trying to even out pores and make things look believable. We don't need it to be perfect. In fact, I, I kind of shy away from it. I want it to look believable. Especially in this situation, because we're going to add, hopefully, add something really weird to her skin here. Uh, I want it to look legit. Okay, so that's what we did. That's our frequency separation. Uh, and you can see before and after there. And that looks really good. And we don't really have anything in here to work with. So we'll just do this. I do want to make a dodge and burn pass real quick. Uh, so what I mean by that is I want to fix some of these areas are modeled a bit. Like here, for example. And I don't want that. I want it to look a little bit more homogenous or, or to lay a little flatter in her skin. So to do that, I'm gonna dodge and burn it. Uh, and I have a whole method for doing that. Again, if you've watched this before, you've probably seen this a thousand times, but I, I have an action. All the action does, oops, that's the wrong action. All the action does is lay out a bunch of layers and I'll explain them. I wonder what's yelling at me about. Let's find out. So, you know what? I think it's because I made I made this action inside of the uh, frequency separation like I I screwed up the group it doesn't really matter anyway so what we have here we have let's work with these first we just have a simple curve it looks like this it's just a curve and then we have another curve that's the other direction and I've turned the masks off and what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on these masks to brighten or darken so that curve shows through it's that simple uh, so all the action does is build these layers for me um, there's nothing else about it uh, but I also also have trouble seeing when I'm supposed to be darkening and lightening. Uh, so I have this little trick that I do where I create a um, solid color gray layer, um, gray here. And then I change this to hue. And this is a true black and white. It is not the same as taking a hue and saturation adjustment layer and doing this. That is a very different result. Uh, and let me show you that if you haven't seen that, uh, why I'm saying that. Let's take a quick, let's take a red and we're going to make a new layer with the brush. So take just a second, but I think you'll like it. Red dot, we'll make a blue one. We'll make a yellow one. Oops, yellow, well, yellow green, whatever that is. Now, if we use this method to make everything uh, black and white, you can see that this, this method, 
everything seems like it would. The yellow would be brighter than the blue and, and the red and so on. So that's why I like this method. It actually uses perceptual black and white, right? But if we use hue and saturation and we go and we pull saturation down, uh, these are all the same. And that's obviously not right. So this, uh, this isn't going to work as a method for converting to black and white. So never use it this way. It doesn't work that way in Photoshop because there's two different color models. There's hue, saturation, and lightness, and hue, saturation, and brightness. And they are not mutually exclusive. So uh, be aware, this is not the way to convert something to black and white. So we're not going to use it that. We need this. So why did I make it black and white? Well, I could see it better. Um, so I want to put a curve on this as well, just so I can really kind of yank on it. And I'm just going to make this as contrasty and blotchy as I possibly can. Uh, and doing that is going to help me see the areas that need to be darkened and lightened. This is going to go pretty fast, by the way, but uh, talk about something that is a game changer to make your images better. Uh, this would be it. So you can see these dark islands up here. I need to fix that. So I'm just going to go grab a brush. Low. I use a 1% flow and a really soft brush. And I just go and just bring these up so they're not dark islands anymore. That's really all we're doing. We're just applying that curve in those areas. Uh, so this is all is a little bit more homogenous. That's that simple. There's not a lot to it. And we are obviously yanked. We yanked up the contrast in this using this working curve here. Uh, so it's not really fair later on when we take this curve off, everything's going to look a lot better automatically. So I'm just going to move the curve again. And I'm kind of moving it to the right and then exposing different areas as I work from one side to the next. And this is where you're supposed to use those dark and light uh, curves together. This is why my images always tend to be a little brighter um, is because I end up not using the dark one as much uh, because the light one is just more satisfying, right? It's, it's easier to see, but ideally you'd want to use these. So just kind of doing a bit of a brighten there at the eyes and under the chin and then pick it up again, move it. You just kind of creep it across the whole image here, taking your time, looking for areas where, oops, where you just have something that just seems like it could be brightened a bit, so, or darkened. Here, here. And after a while, you get to see these a little bit easier. I think that that's uh, part of the reason why I really like using these curves is because it helps you see, no matter your level of experience in doing this. Um, I know that when I first started out, I had great difficulty knowing what to dodge and burn. That was probably the biggest challenge. So doing it this way seemed to work out better. So by the way, we have a Discord channel, a Discord server, I should say. So if you like to chat during the day and show off your work and ask questions and so on, uh, that is a benefit uh, that is free. Uh, you just, just join it. There's a link down in the description. Um, and it's where we hang out and talk about stuff from mixology to playing games to obviously Photoshop photography. And then I have started to do some uh, image critique on there as well. I might simulcast those to YouTube, but at this time, that is not what we're doing. We're just keeping them all on Discord. So if you happen to be on there during one of those times, you can get an image critiqued and uh, and uh, or benefit from watching someone else get one critiqued. And those are all voiced, by the way, so you get to actually chat instead of just typing. Uh, if you're nervous about that kind of thing, you, know, you, can, you can just type if you'd like to. But uh, hey, yeah, I think in an area where in an era where nobody uses the phone anymore, <laughs> I think people are not as apt to use voice. I love calling people still. I'm that way. Okay, so just kind of again evening up some of these. If, by the way, you have trouble seeing in this area, you can do this. You can just reset this curve and flip it upside down. And this. And then you can see into the darker areas better. And you can see we have a bit of work to do over here. Uh, don't get too close, by the way, uh, or you'll get sucked into this thing and it's a career at that point. So I just want to brighten this side. Remember, a pimple is just a dark side and a light side with a red spot in the middle. So it's very easy to remove a pimple and it actually retouch an entire image using just this method. Uh, although a lot more time consuming, I think the result is better, uh, but it's not really practical for most people. Uh, that's why there are high end retouchers that get paid a lot of money to do that kind of thing is they'll sit in front of a picture for six or eight hours and, and do that for you. So let's, uh, let's do just a couple more seconds here of this on her chest. And then we'll be good to go. So you see the benefit of what I'm doing here. Let me know in the in the comments here if you have tried this, if you understand what I'm doing, if you have any questions. Uh, obviously, you're here and you're watching. We have quite a few people. Uh, one like so far, though, so everybody else is really hating on this. <laughs> I appreciate it. If you click the like button, that's a way of 
showing that you like the content and that lets YouTube know this is good stuff and it should show it to more people, which means I make more videos and give this content away for free instead of selling it on my Gumroad channel. So there's that. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. All right. So if we go and let's just trash these two things now, uh, put these in a group. So what did, what was that? Why did we do all that? Let's turn these on and off. That's the before and after for that stuff. It just adds that little bit of polish and I could take more time and do, do a better job down in here. But I think in general, that's a significant step up by the way, very easy to overdo this effect. So be careful with that. Okay. I'm gonna hit save and uh, let's play uh, with these other two layers. The last one's for the eyes. This is overly a highlight. And what I do is I take a brush that's white and at 1% flow and I just go over the catch lights. So right over the catch light. She has context in of course, so it's not as important. Um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit. It's right over the catch light. Adds that otherworldliness to them. There we go. By the way, this can also be done over the lips, uh, but at a lot lower. Gonna add a little bit of gloss to the lip that way. <laughs> Kurt says he does customer service, so he has a phobia for phones, and I can see that. Okay, and then if you want to do anything with uh, with additional dodge and burn to kind of sculpt the face out, that's what this whole layer is for. This dodge and burn here. Uh, I'm not gonna do a lot of that. Here. I'm really happy with this for the most part, so I don't want to mess it mess it up. Besides that, we're about to mess it up anyway. What is that yellow doing on my brush? That's bad. There we go. Okay, so what do we want to do with this? Well, I wanted to play with drawing some veins out of her eyes and down her face and look at, make it look really gross and gory. Not bloody, but just disturbing. You know, disturbing. Disturbing's fun. So I'm going to take these two layers and put them in this um, aptly named, not aptly named, Dodge and Burn group. Uh, this was actually the, um, the frequency separation. So we're just call it FS because we're lazy. Look, I'm actually naming my groups. Like I never do that. And this is our dodge and burn. Yeah, this counts. We, we know what those mean, right? Uh, so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to grab a brush and uh, I want my, um, all the plugins are gone because I had the upgrade, obviously. So my, uh, color selection tool, my cool iris selection flow tool is gone. So I'm going to use the other one, the standard one here, this particular thing, which I don't enjoy as much. All right, so I'm going to pick uh, from her eye here and I'm going to go with something a little bit more red. So actually, I'm going to start with the blue. Let's do it with the blue first. So the blue would be what would be under your skin, right? So a kind of a cooler pale color and we're going to do it on its own so we're going to call this hey we're going to call this the blue layer or b for blue right um now i'm going to use a sharp brush and this may not seem uh, like it makes sense initially but uh, we can always blur it later but we can't unblur it later right so i'm going to use a somewhat hard brush with um, a rather small brush um, and a lot more just want to see what i'm doing here we go all right, so let's bring the flow down quite a bit, maybe like 5%. So as we're drawing, yeah, there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some little lines out like this. I'm just going to just draw them on here. There's no rhyme or reason. These are the smaller ones first. I'm just going to do a bunch of these kind of branching out like little lightning bolts. And then we can see what I'm doing here. They're, they're very tiny. Um, that's not helpful. How about we do that? Uh, well, I was gonna say I was gonna I was gonna find a way so you could actually see this, but I don't know that um, I don't know if that's the most helpful thing in the world there. So all I did was put a white layer underneath what we're doing so you can kind of see what we're doing. And I lost my blue. And I want to follow the contour of the face, meaning I don't want to draw one like like that. That'd be dumb. So I want to try and like just break, break up the side of the nose a bit like this. And uh, I'm just playing with doesn't have to look 
you know, completely perfect. Because what we're going to do with it is, is just going to be minor. This. Playing around. Yeah, it's Halloween, right? We don't get to do this around Christmas time. Well, I mean, you can, but it's uh, probably not as popular. Just, just going to say that. Okay, so I have this, this kind of done. And now let's do another one. And we're going to call this B2. And we're going to do this a bit bigger. So B, tiny bit bigger. And I want to pick a different color blue. I don't want to draw it the same color the whole time. Right? Uh, these would be just a bit bigger. Not as many. Hopefully not over the other ones again. Hey, if you're not following along, grab a family photo. This is a great opportunity for you to do that retouching that your wife keeps asking you. Honey, will you finally get a picture of your mom done for Halloween? I know she would love one. Oh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to. It's a great idea, honey. Because I'm sure that will lead to you sleeping on the couch tonight. No. Absolutely. It's fine. It's fine. Just tell him Scott said it's fine. Okay, that's uh, that's good. All right, so I want to do is I want to combine these and I think I'm going to use a blending mode, so I kind of push them down into the picture a bit, right? I think um, they need to be pushed down a bit. And obviously, they're they're too sharp. Uh, but the cool thing is we can blur this. Now, if I want to, I can convert this to a smart object and, and do it that way. This just kind of work here. So I'm just going to do blur, Gaussian blur, and pick something really tiny. It's probably like one pixel or maybe half a pixel. Um, let's do 0.5. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks good. And if you're applying the same filter back to back, you don't have to go pick it again. You can just do it right here. It's just Control Alt F, and uh, that will blur it a bit. And in fact, if you want to do that again, just you just bang on that key, and it'll keep doing it. It'll keep blurring it over and over and over again. Okay, and that's okay. I'm gonna combine these together and uh, change the blending mode again. Maybe there's a better blending mode. Let's look around, for it, shall we? Overlay, Ooh, overlay for the win. Oh, hard light's nice. I like hard light, pretty decent. I'll put a mask on this because I am finding that I think this has been done a bit too, what, regularly around the eye? Like it's just all the way around? Like maybe I don't want it in through here. So I'll just mask that part out, something like that. And we'll do the other eye real fast, so we'll just be, I uh, can do that in a different layer, just in case we screwed up. Hey, look at that. That's screwing it up right away. Let's just right away screw it up. Seven. A little, a little disturbing thing. We'll pretend we can't see them all from this side. Good enough. And then control F to blur it again. Blur it again. Now we do have a depth of field back in here that we have to contend with. So maybe we need to be much more aggressive with that depth, with that blur on that layer. So it doesn't look goofy. You should see it, but it should look like it fits, right? It looks like 4.8 for all of you who guessed 4.8. That would be the correct number. Right there. Okay. That's lovely. I think we've done a, a lovely thing. So let's, uh, let's keep rolling it. If you're enjoying this, by the way, let me know in the comments. I can't, uh, as I say, I can't see my statistics. I don't see how many are watching and how many are, are, uh, shaking their heads going, why, why did I do this to myself today? And by the way, if we know this is our blue layer and well, this is, these are both blue layers. Um, we can also change this. Um, now you can do that two ways, hue and saturation adjustment layer, right? And you can shift these things. Uh, another way that I, I sometimes prefer, and I, I don't know, have a good reason to is a solid color and then clip it. And this allows you to just adjust the color this way. Instead of using the goofy graph, I think sometimes this is easier to kind of see what you're doing. Uh, so note that we can go back and change our colors later if you don't like it. So this is our B, our blue tool. And um, we have a blending mode here. We had, which one was more believable? Hard light, perhaps? We can always lower the opacity if we don't like it. Or if you like it and you like it a lot, just double it up, right? <laughs> Like is that, is that, um, maybe this is interesting and we put, 
and put a hold on alt and put a mask on it like this and then we can go and draw in areas where we want it really yanked up a bit like um, one, three, like maybe a couple of these areas here so not the whole thing but like your skin would be uneven so you'd see them here and there maybe that looks like ballpoint pen i think we need a little bit more um a little bit more blur on that one Looks like 10 of you. Oh, all right. Well, welcome aboard. I was going to do this on my own, and I was like, you know what? I'll just I'll just open it up for anybody that was hanging around. Looking for something to do. Let's make let's make a picture of a loved one look really creepy. That sounds like fun. Hey, should we do it around the mouth, too? And let's do the eyes first, and then we'll figure out the mouth. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to do with red now. So do a new one. What can I call this? Uh, R for red. B for brush. We're going to pick from the image if possible. Uh, and then I always want to try and change the color. And I find there's a little L you can do. So if you, you picked a color and you do something and you want to change it later, bring it down or bring it over. You know, just keep doing this little L thing. You can also do it with a hue. So shift the hue a little bit and then bring it over. So always change as often as you can. So you're not drawing with the same color constantly. This is bad practice. All right. So for this, um, by the way, we are going to tuck all these under the frequency separation. We're going to tuck them all in here. So they're under the texture of the skin. That's really what makes this amazing, right? So maybe we'll tuck all these in here right now. Uh, this will just look more believable. So they have to be under this high layer. It's the This high layer is the thing that applies the texture over everything. In fact, when we do that, we can kind of see how these might need a little love. Uh, if we want to do that, uh, by the way, another way to do that is to grab the blur tool here and just kind of go ham on it a bit and blur them if you need to in certain areas if they just look too sharp. I would do this with uh, everything turned on. So see what you're doing. Oops, except for that thing. So if we need to blur them a bit, then you can. Okay. I don't know that I like that color blue yet. We, we might we might readjust that. All right, red. Let's do red. So red. Again, we do a hard brush. And um, it doesn't really matter what color I pick, so I'm going to change it probably later again anyway. And a smaller brush. Much smaller. We don't do as many of these, I don't think. The jazz seems somehow inappropriate for this, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Filter, blur, draw some blur. It is way too strong. I want to do, I know what I want to do. Um, it's just uh, how to make it look realistic. So let's say, for example, here's my, here's my example. So I'm going to do something like, like really, like, hmm. something that's bigger. But I want to, you know, maybe I'll just do it on one of these levels. Sorry, just thinking out loud here, which is obviously the whole goal behind this this live stream let's take these and try and make them look a little more real so i'm going to do brush make a small brush tiny brush it's only one pixel how about we go two pixels a white brush a low really low flow and just so the the light is obviously coming from this side here so some of these would have um a brightness on this side right these little red and blue lines Help them look a little more three dimensional and glossy and icky. Obviously, we're going to need to blur this a bit in a bit. But, um, let's start. Especially the, the brighter ones. It's more intense. And then for the other side, um, let's do 
flip that over. experimenting it right here and then blur this Passing blur very much tiny bit like one you probably do this with an emboss filter too but I, I kind of want to make it look better I don't like this red one so much like the red one is not my um it's not my friend compared to that blue one I think the blue one looks pretty creepy I still think we could do better with the blending mode. I don't think the blending mode is the perfect blending mode here. There are better options. Difference is kind of fun, actually. No. Ooh, Luminosity's got some, got some options there. That's kind of cool. You know, I kind of like that one, even though it doesn't have the color to it. But I think uh, I think I'm going to stick with overlay, and we're going to need to change this blue color. It's just not going to work out. It's, uh, we're going to have some issues, Mr. Blue Color. It's too too marker like. Something like that. Now I can bring that um, into play a bit more. I like it. I don't think Angela knew what she was getting into when she came to the studio for this thing. So we'd be like, hey, you should do a retouching video on how to remove those veins from around her eyes. <laughs> I, mean, I just did a retouching video on how to add veins around her eyes. That's what I just did. I did the opposite. I'd have to blur those a little bit more on that side. Yes. I like it. Okay, we'll pick a different let's put this kind of color in here, maybe a bit more bluish. I'll put it on whatever this red layer is, maybe. Don't think we used this much. No, we did, didn't we? You know, that's not too bad. I'll stick with that. Do I wanna put some on her head? Maybe. Let's do them at full strength here, and then we can always knock it back. Look, I made a wrong thing. That'll teach me to look down at my keyboard when I'm typing. All right, so Still think we can do maybe even do it just on the high layer. I'm gonna duplicate the high layer though, just in case I screw this up. 
um, I don't want to have <laughs> a broken high layer. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to find 50% gray here. So 50%, right? Then I'm going to add a bit. Uh, maybe I can go higher than that. That way when I draw on here, I'm drawing on the high layer uh, with a gray brush, which should raise the, um, I want to call it raise that side visually. At least that's my theory here. Let's try it. Yeah, that's looking pretty effective. I like that. You can even go with a bigger brush. Make it really kind of big and icky. Again, I'm going for a subtlety here. Uh, and if I want to, let's... Oops. Not, oh, damn it, I can't put that back. Right there. And then let's... Flip it to this one, and we'll make this one the opposite. So we'll go down like maybe 42 on this. So whenever you're drawing with a darker color on an overlay layer, you are drawing in multiply mode. And when you're drawing above 50%, you're drawing in screen mode. So it's a way to kind of adjust what things you want on. Maybe something like that. What is this? Oh. That was a failed attempt. It was the first attempt at that. This one I kind of like. I think we're going to stick with that one. And we do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go with the blue on this side. I'm having trouble seeing that other one. We want it subtle. Plenty of undos. Let's do it slow here. Gonna really make these a little bit more aggressive near the near the eyes. Or red. It's coming together. I'm building it up slowly over time because. Uh, I really don't know. Ooh, there's a big piece of furniture moving. I uh, really don't know what um, what I want here. So I'm just kind of exploring this as I go. Thank you for sticking with me as we do this. If you're new to the channel, I just kind of come here and make art. Uh, and you can laugh at me or push the like button. Let me know that you like what you see. Um, I had three likes so far. That's uh, not a lot of people clapping. So I'm, I'm going to assume that. It's the jazz and it's putting you to sleep and I should pick a different uh, music for next time. Death metal, perhaps. What do you think? Is this a promise? Are you all working on your own pictures as you're watching me do this? Is that what's going on? You broke out the picture of your aunt and you're like, you know what? I'm going to give her this a Halloween. I'm going to frame this thing. Or maybe a Christmas present. It'd be a great Christmas present for her. She uh, 
forgot about my birthday last year, so this, we're going to get her this year. We're going to get her a portrait. She keeps asking for a portrait, and she says, you're a photographer. Why don't you ever give me a portrait? Well, now you can show her why. There you go. Gifts for loved ones. I'm going to make a new layer here. Oh, actually, I'm not. I'm just going to keep going the same layer. Why not? Uh, let's let's go with the mouth here. Let me get some face cracks built up here a bit. Go with this edge. Fun with Photoshop. Yes, it doesn't always have to be for the power of good, does it? Mm -mm. Did you see the uh, the news where there's some company where you can pay them 60 bucks and they'll do pictures of you in a private jet for your uh, Instagram followers so you can think that you're all bored in your super private jet? I just saw that on, uh, on the news. So there you go. Now you can draw veins on people in their private jet new business okay let's do <laughs> I like it it's just wrong Let's take a little bit of uh, trying not to be random is effort, actually. Like trying to purposely be random is harder than it than you would think it would be. Kind of want them to be darker, like in here, and then fade out as they go farther away. Just so they look a little bit more realistic, I think. Oh, honey, what'd you do at work today? Well, I drew veins on a lady's face. It's true. It was, uh, you know, something this guy said. Hey, let's. Uh, it'll be fun gift for Christmas for your sister. You know, um, because she she's hard to shop for. So I was thinking, hey, a picture of you with veins on your face would be a great, um, a great Christmas present, and. Uh, and I think he's right. I think he is. Uh, he's on to something. I'm not going to worry if these don't look quite right yet because we can blur those a little bit. Um, let me switch to blue here. A little, well, just a little fun with blue. Maybe a bit bigger too. Just do some bigger movement with your here. Make it a little obvious that there's something going on here. Try not to, make, again, make it look too homogenous across the face. Let's add a little variety here. Okay. I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do this. I've just, again, I, the first time I've ever done this, it just came to me that I should do this. This is, uh, this is what happens when you don't sleep well. <laughs> what do I do tomorrow? I'm going to draw pictures. I'm going to draw veins. And a picture of Angela right after I get done ranting about how well, people don't know how to use their camera. I think that's what I'm going to do. That'll be my Monday. That'll be the way to start the week. So uh, obviously uh, a lot of practice goes into making veins. Um, not. We're just we're just guessing, right? And go on the boot. That is a bit much. I'm less flow there, Captain. Go on the high side of these. Should raise them up visually. Because we're drawing this on the high layer. So it should give us a little bit of a texture bump. Oh, it didn't look right. Kind of like trying to retouch uh, a piece of fuzz off your monitor. Okay, and black. 
That's way too much. I don't think we can even drop low enough here. Can we? No, let's make it a less thing. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. I think she'll love that. Do I even care about the rest of this now? Do I just want to stay with the pick? Maybe I'll just make this a headshot. I mean, realistically, I don't care about, <laughs> I don't care about the rest. I care about this. Maybe I'll do that. Let's just call it a headshot. Uh, so like I talked about a second ago, if you want to get rid of these hairs and whatever, I mean, you don't want to edit them out, just remove them from the high layer. Um, that's good enough. They'll blur out and look like a depth of field thing. I use this trick all the time. It looks good enough and you don't have to worry about trying to remove little stray hairs. Look at that. It's legit. That's a great lens you got there. Even her hair is blurry. I know. Very posh. Extra. Extra money. There we go. I'm happy with that. That was a nice little diversion. Okay, so uh, we got that done. Let's stack all these together and maybe double it. Let's just see if we if we double the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of promising, isn't it? Um, can we? blend mode this whole thing here a little bit more interesting just playing with blending the entire group and then we could put a mask on this one um and then take some of this down because it's a bit too much in places but some of the places are kind of cool like um here just random knock them down a bit. And then we could also just remove the effect completely in here if we, like, this is just too much in here. These are too close together. Uh, maybe it's this group here that needs to go. Just look for things that look visually annoying to you. If it's annoying, then remove it, right? It's not, um, it's not a science. God, that is good. I'm really happy with that. You know what? If two looks good, how does three look? Um, let's just let's just copy this thing again. Let's copy this one. This one's more aggressive. Eh. All right, I think I think we reached our limit with two. Who looks pretty good. Now I gotta see if there's anything that's not that's too blurry or not blurry enough. Like this stuff's not blurry enough there. Um we could probably just combine all this together, really. I mean I don't need it um I don't need them separate like that, do I? No. I'll just take them all out. We got one big layer with everything on it. So if I take this and I can use this blur tool to kind of go in here and work this a bit. Blur those a bit. It was too like too sharp for um for what's going on there. The blending mode, by the way, turned off. We need to turn the blending mode back on. Use the blur tool a little bit here and there to kind of make them look like they're really under the skin. That's lovely. Your mom would love it. This is what you should get her for Christmas. That's right. She'll love it. If she doesn't, just tell her you got it from me. And she'll try and figure out how to get on YouTube and downvote that video. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm I duplicated and I'm just now copying. I'm just masking in some of the effect from the layer underneath. I don't want it all there. That one's just too much. This is all juice in here. Yeah. Yeah. Aw, she's pretty. Okay, so let's... Um, I'm going to keep that one. 
let's take this into capture one real quick and color grade it and see what kind of hilarity we can make um in the end so we just drew all those on there just really nearly with a small pen i mean that's all we did but we drew it between our frequency separation high and low layer that's the secret to this i did duplicate my high layer in case i screwed it up i mean that's really all we did so super simple man you could probably do better than i did i just again i've never done this before i'm just gonna wing it okay hang on let me move this off the screen uh so that i can make sure that uh, this doesn't get um banned on youtube Okay, we're good. So there it is. And with some, we're going to just crop it inside Capture One. And let's do uh, 4 by 5 Oops. Something like this. No, I want to see the horns. All right, I like it. Now let's color grade it. So let's just go and uh, first of all, let's make any decisions, final decisions on contrast and stuff. Um, do I want less or more contrast? Uh, maybe a little. I just wiggle around until it feels good. It's, it's the most good rule in life. There we go. Like that. We can't use exposure anymore. This uh, once you leave raw, this is kind of muddy. So we're not going to do that. We're going to use the brightness here and. Um, get it to where we'd like it. This is your dark and moody meter, right? So you can make things really dark and moody by playing with this here. Uh, so the combination of these two post Photoshop is really, I think, the area you need to focus on personally. All right, so again, I'm just checking the exposure to see if it's right around this this line here on her skin, a little under. So I would say this image needs a little bit more white. We can also, by the way, you can also use the highlight as kind of a punch here. Or let's create a new field adjustment layer and use the luminosity range and just highlight just the brightest parts of her face. Let's go this way. Like right in here. Only the brightest parts. And then we can go and raise just the brightness in those areas. So it's, it's adding just that little bit of shine to her face. That makes sense. I think I like that. A little otherworldly. Maybe. Mm, I think the forehead's too bright. Let's just not do that. Worth trying. I think I'm going to stick with just adding a little bit of highlight here. Shadow recovery, don't think we need any of that. That's just gonna go the other other way from what we want to go. I think we want to go with a little darker and moodier here. Okay, color, shadow. And again, I go all the way around the horn. I just did a whole five five uh method five method five episode series of capture one retouching where we did a whole image inside of capture one. Uh it took a few episodes and I think it turned out really well. I'm just looking at the shadows here, looking for what makes me happy. You make small and smaller movements, and then once you find a color you like, then just play with the saturation to see how, how dark or how light you need it. I think, um, I think I like that. I'm surprised I didn't go more in the red, but it should work out. All right, so let's try the mid-tone. Same trick. Poor man color theory says that the red will probably end up over here, but um, let's just not trust it since we're working with weird anyway. Because this would be normal. This would be a normal skin tone, but maybe that's not what we want. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's like a, um, picking the opposite of that uh, color of her skin normally, or or at least a color that appears opposite kind of washes her out a bit. Um, I really like that. It's as if um, the color in her skin is gone. I'm just adding a little bit there. Maybe. I had it before and I don't think I have it now. There we go. It was just a little bit more blue. There's a, just a sweet spot in there. Something like that. 
That's lovely. She'll love it. Um, and uh, highlight probably won't do anything to highlight, but let's just test it. Yeah, no, let's do that. And then master for the overall feel of the image. I think something like that. All right, then uh, I'm going to do um, uh, just an adjustment layer, hit B. I'm going to do her hair here real quick. We're just going to throw a mask on this. M for mask. So let's see what we're doing. Just be careful not to hit her skin or hit the background. That's your two, your two rules. You go back with your eraser and fix it. By the way, it's easier to just go over it and then erase the the mistake than trying to draw in that tight space. That's just a really good rule of thumb for anything when you're trying to do in your confined area. Just draw it too aggressively and then bring it back. Like same with the horns, just, just cover the horns and come back with the eraser and then fix the edge. A lot easier than trying to make the brush small to fit in a goofy space. Otherwise you get a halo around it. So that's not good. All right. M for mask, and now I want to go to clarity and we use punch usually on the hair. Nice framing, that's beautiful. What a lovely portrait. I think she'll be quite happy with it. Um, we're gonna do another one here, brush, and I'm gonna do the eyes. Um, just an M. And in this case, I might be a little, um, overly aggressive with my selection uh, just to kind of get some of these veins that are close to the eye I might even get a bit of the mouth here well let's do let's do that in a second let's do the eyes first and I actually have a preset for eyes I it's just these settings and I just went and hit save preset so it's just a classic clarity at 17 and 24. it just adds a little bit of sharpening around the eyes it's so subtle um, you see the before and after and let's try it just draw it in. I like it, but not right here. Any any other final adjustments? Um, maybe saturation. Maybe. Well, there you go. I think that's quite lovely. I think she'll um I think she'll be happy with that. <laughs> that's just wrong. Actually, she's really fun. She's a super creative person, so she'll be she'll be really overjoyed with this. All right, that's it. That's uh that's the end of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh normally I'd stare at it for a while, but we're running up onto the holiday. So um, I'm just gonna throw my signature in a place that's not too stupid. But you can see it if you're looking for it. That's my rule of thumb for things that go online. I don't like to put a big old copyright across the bottom. I always say that the, the bigger your copyright symbol is, the, the newer you are as a photographer. So we don't want that. Um, Brett's asking, when I switched to Capture One, uh, did I ditch all my old files to sessions? So when I changed from Lightroom to Capture One, I actually did so... I worked, I used both products simultaneously for a while. And uh, you had to use the synchronize tool inside of Lightroom to kind of refresh the library or the catalog. Where Capture One, if you're using sessions, it's automatic. Like every time it just reads from the hard drive. So it was very easy to move to Capture One. And what I did is I used it for new work. So I said, okay, anytime I do new work, I'm going to do each new session as a session. And I think it is this, I'm going to say mistake that people who come from Lightroom to Capture One automatically assume they need a catalog because catalog was the word used in the Lightroom universe. They automatically go for a Capture, a capture One catalog. And I actually don't like the catalog at all. Um, my primary reasons are twofold. One is it gets huge and then you got to start a new one at some point. What do you do that annually? So now what's the use of having a catalog if you only search for one year? So you've kind of undermined the entire thing. Plus a catalog is searchable, right? Well, what are you doing? Are you keywording everything? If you're not taking the time to keyword everything, what do you mean by searchable? 
oh, do you mean you can go by date and by description? Well, I do that with sessions right now. If I bring my Windows toolbar in here, here's all my Capture One sessions right here. They're all just directories and they all have their capture output select and trash folder. And they're, they're all right there. That's my catalog, right? Well, no, each one's a session. Uh, so I don't have one giant overall database that has everything in it. Um, I just go and grab what I want and use it. Uh, so I think this is a better, uh, sessions are way better than catalogs by far, by far. Plus each capture one session is broken up into four pieces the capture, the select, the output, and the trash, right? In a ca in a catalog situation, they're all piled in one giant pile. So if I say to you, I want you to back up only the most important files to the cloud, which ones are those? Well, in capture one, it's the ones in the output folder. Second most important would be the select folder. And the least important would probably be obviously the trash, but the capture folder, those are the ones I took that eh, they were okay, but they weren't as good as the ones that I moved to the select folder. So why am I backing up everything? Well, in a catalog, you have no way to differentiate. Capture one or Lightroom, it doesn't matter. But in a session, now there's only 10 or 15 so files that are really critically important from any session. Those are the ones the client paid for, the ones I already touched. Uh, those are the ones I back up a bunch. So that's why sessions are so much better. Um, but you, you can't just import everything and start over. I think it's more important or more intelligent for you to kind of work with, in fact, moving to any piece of software. All new work goes into the new piece of software and anytime you have to go back and touch old work for some reason, then I would convert it to the new format. But if you have stuff from 2008, don't take your time to go back and move that. It's just a waste of life. Uh, just do it moving forward and as an, as an on an as-needed basis. So that's my advice to you. Otherwise, you'll never do it. You'll never make the move because you're like, oh, look at the years of work I have to redo. Well, don't do it that way. It's a lot harder. Well, everybody, I think this is it. Um, this was the, the goal today, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Although I have to say it's not exactly what I wanted it to look like, but uh, I'm not disappointed with it. It's just different. Uh, sure, right, no problem. So I hope that was entertaining and you learned something. Uh, if anything, you saw how I retouched skin pretty quickly and that worked out well. And then you learned how we destroy skin <laughs> pretty quickly. Uh, so I think she's going to be so happy with this. Um, yeah, she's going to love it. I probably should have fixed those in the context too but i have to say they add a little bit of creepy factor to it so i don't know that i that i need to but um yeah so there you go thanks for coming in um click the like button if you haven't already i know some of you stuck around to the end here i have four likes on my live uh, so obviously liking these um makes me motivated to do them it's that whole uh, adrenaline motivator kind of thingy so if you do like the live streams feel free to to click the like button. I'm not saying you have to subscribe, but clicking the like button's helpful. Uh, this will stay around for the general public for a few days, and then it will move into the uh, member-only section where all the other ones live. And uh, that's where, if you want to see these more advanced tutorials or uh, something like that, it's five bucks a month. I mean, that's a coffee, right? Uh, for 30 days of all kinds of crazy stuff in there. So everybody, thanks for coming in. I appreciate, I appreciate you coming in and actually taking the time to watch these and I hope you learned something. And I'll catch you next time. Stay safe.